Hey, honey. Yes, Barry? Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Where do we always go? Hasta encuentra la playa Por eso grito al mundo Yo soy de Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de arrullo en el mar Samba de Puerto Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. I'm your host, Barry Kester, and I'm just so happy to be introducing you to my favorite vacation destination. Maybe it's even yours, and that's Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. That music you're listening to is performed by Alberto Perez, and Alberto is the owner of the La Palapa Group of Restaurants. Those are the La Palapa, Puerto Vallarta's oldest restaurant on the famous Los Muertos Beach, and the El Dorado Restaurant and Beach Club right next door. So you can enjoy that fantastic view of the Los Muertos Pier, all lit up at night in beautiful colors, or during the day in its grand splendor for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, seated with your toes in the sand right at the water's edge. It's so romantic. It's so Puerto Vallarta, my friends. This week we are going to get a little wonky here. We're going to dive into the realm of making your car illegal in Vallarta. Uh, you're going to be meeting my friend Pat. Pat is from Pat's Plates, uh, expat help for vehicle registration and driver's licenses in Puerto Vallarta. And Pat's going to be discussing getting a Mexican driver's license as well as proper registration of your Mexican vehicle. Uh, you might be saying, Barry, I have no intention of having a car in paradise. And for you, I'm going to tell you, hang in there. Just hang in there, please. Pat has some great advice for all of us. And it's an interesting subject, nonetheless. So I'll also be talking with you about last month's journey to Maito with my wife during Dia de los Muertos week. Uh, we visited with Maddie and Jesse over in El Tuito at their restaurant, Provecho Panque Panini's Pizza y Mas. Try saying that fast five times. Uh, Maddie, Maddie has some news from El Tuito, and we'll be sharing that with you. Uh, I'm going to tell you about some, about some ticked-off tex- taxistas that we uh, ran into, uh, a guitar that I brought down with me to be painted, uh, Vallarta news and more. But before we get to Pat, let's see what's happening this week in Puerto Vallarta, the second day of December, 2022. As the year uh, comes to an end and high season comes into full swing, we only have two more national holidays left on the calendar, with Revolution Day, uh, which was November 20th, in our rearview mirror. We have only the Festival of Our Lady of Guadalupe that began yesterday in Puerto Vallarta and, of course, in Mexico City, too. Uh, That started, of course, December the 1st. And it runs until the 12th of December. And then, of course, there's Christmas Day, which is December the 25th. And there's going to be lots of posadas. People are going to be having uh, Christmas parties, these posadas. Uh, Tons of those. Uh, Anyway, this year should be quite a celebration, as it's been two years since the pandemic changed just about everything. Uh, This year, we are back to normal, says here in small print. Uh, from a blog I found from Via del Palmar Beach Resort and Spa. It reads, The holiday season in Mexico is full of family celebrations and colorful decorations, and all the Puerto Vallarta festivals 2022 has. The Festival of Our Lady of Guadalupe is one of the biggest. Celebrated throughout the country on the days leading up to December 12th, this festival honors the Virgin Mary and her role in Mexican culture. Beginning on December 1st, communities from around the region come together, filling each night with music and laughter. Puerto Vallarta is one of the best places to celebrate under the light of the Church of Our Lady of Guadalupe, the famous cathedral, along with the Malacan's boardwalk. If you're visiting Puerto Vallarta this winter, you won't want to miss out on these 12 days of lively festival and events. The history of the Virgin de Guadalupe begins in 1531, 
outside Mexico City when the Virgin Mary appeared to a young peasant boy named Juan Diego, speaking in his native Nahual language. Uh, with her encouragement, the young Juan convinced Archbishop of Mexico City to build a church on the hill of Tepeyac. Uh, the persuading point for the Archbishop was when the image of the Virgin appeared inside the cloak of Juan Diego. Over time, richer and more elaborate shrines were built on the hill, and today the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe is a major pilgrimage site in the suburbs of Mexico City. Its most famous relic is Juan Diego's cloak, on which you can still see the Virgin Mary's image. December 12th is the date when Juan Diego's cloak appeared with the image of Lady of Guadalupe before the Archbishop, and today it is the date for the Festival of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Like most festivals and events in Mexico, this holiday is stretched over several days. Beginning on December 1st, throughout the country, pilgrims make their way to cathedrals, some even traveling to the hill of Tepeyac to honor the Virgin Mary. For one of the biggest Puerto Vallarta festivals 2022 has, the celebration begins at the Woolworth store on Juarez Street and stretches to the Church of Our Lady of Guadalupe, down the cobblestone street families, churches, schools, unions, businesses, and community organizations form a processional for the Festival of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Traditional dancers and mariachi bands march along, making this pilgrimage a joyful celebration of culture. Vendors on the side of the road serve hot street food and sell toys for children, while fireworks shoot off overhead. On the final night, December 12th, the procession ends at the Church of Our Lady of Guadalupe with a special Mass to honor the Virgin Mary. The faith and love of the Mexican people are infectious, and if you're going to attend any of Puerto Vallarta's festivals in 2022 has, this is the one that will fill your heart with joy and hope. Uh, December 12th is also the anniversary of the founding of Puerto Vallarta, making it an especially auspicious day to visit the city. Uh, when it comes to traditional festivals and events, Mexico is known for lively and vibrant celebrations. The Virgin of Guadalupe is iconic in Mexico and dearly loved and in the hearts of many. Regardless of religious background, all are welcome to come and watch the processionals on the first 12 nights of December, celebrating the hope, joy, and culture of Mexico. And I have a link to that very informative article. Uh, from Via de Palmar Beach Resort and Spa in the show notes. Thank you very much for that. It pretty much wraps it all up, doesn't it? In a nice little package. Uh, now, this weekend, uh, Saturday, December 3rd, uh, tomorrow that is, and Sunday, December 4th, uh, from 1 in the afternoon until 10 at night, you got to catch the 5th edition of uh, Brewmasters Festival de Cerveza Artesanal. Uh, it's going to be over at Puerto Magico. There's going to be 15 different breweries. There's going to be dozens of beers. So if you're a beer drinker, you just got to go. Uh, there's going to be music, of course, and there's going to be food, mixologists serving uh, ricea and other alcoholic and non-alcoholic treats, but tons of beer. Admission and parking are free. Uh, you just got to get over to Puerto Magico this weekend. So get on over there and Get your beer on, for goodness sake. I received an email from a, from listener and contributor Marty. Thank you, Marty. Marty was asking what happened to Roberto Flores Diaz, uh, Roberto's uh, silver shop over on Olas Altas. Over, um, it's um, it's on the Malacan uh, extension right across from Tile Park, and we've been there before. We've talked with Roberto on numerous occasions. And to answer your question, uh, Marty, Roberto moved from his round-shaped kiosk. I've got a picture of that in the show notes, so you can be, um, you know, uh, reminded about Roberto. But he moved to a spot right next door. I think they demolished his kiosk. Uh, but anyway, never fear, Roberto, the silver guy, is still in business, uh, just one or two doors down. So you look for him. Uh, if you don't see him in the shop, just, you can usually find him playing cards. He's like usually out there right near his store. And he's out there with the vendors uh, taking all their money playing cards. So you can you can find him there. Uh, speaking of Roberto's, 
if you remember our friend Roberto Castellon, uh, Roberto was, uh, we had him on the show from Roberto's Puerto Nuevo Superb Seafood. He had a restaurant there on uh, Basilio Bedillo. And he closed that restaurant, I think, just a, a year or two ago. But I got a note from him that he's got a new place. It's called Marlowe's Dining Room. And Marlowe's had their grand opening on uh, November the 5th, uh, just this couple of weeks ago. And uh, it's described as an eclectic and elevated cuisine by Chef Jonathan Rico. Uh, and the restaurant is located um, on Basilio Badillo, uh 277. It's just right down the street from Roberto's old place, which was at Basilio Badillo, uh 283, believe it or not. So just two doors down. Uh, you will find his new restaurant. I have a link to his new place, and I'll make sure that when I'm in Vallarta uh, in a month or two, I'll stop by and see his new place. We'll, we'll talk with him. Uh, now, staying on the subject of Roberto's, I don't think I've talked with uh, you about Roberto Lazaro. Roberto is an artist. I heard about Roberto through my friend Trish. Trish Trish has been on the show. I had her on the show with her husband, Chad. And Trish is our sky... Remember, sky, we had her... She talked about her skydiving adventure in Puerto Vallarta. She did like a tandem dive, and she told us about that. So anyway, Trish told me about Roberto Lazaro, who she said will paint on anything. And she said that she brought him a pair of Vans, a pair of tennis shoes, and had Roberto paint them. And so she showed him to me, and I thought that was pretty wild. And uh, so Roberto's place is actually a, just a little closet. It's like it's a it's right next door to Bar La Playa, and like sandwiched between Bar La Playa and the Hotel uh, Eloisa. And it's right there on Lazaro Cardenas, right across the street from Tile Park PV. And Roberto, Roberto was actually born into a home uh, of artists. He's a third-generation artist of ceramic painters and wood carvers. And what he does is he sits in his little closet there and he paints things. Uh, his style is kind of a, it's very colorful. It's wichol, kind of Oaxacan in nature with colorful mandala designs and floral flourishes and he paints alabrijes. He paints on plaster things. Um, alabrijes, of course, if you don't know what I'm talking about, they're little wooden carved animals. And uh, and he paints on hats. And he every once in a while he'll paint on a cow skull. I've seen those, um, you know, on walls, adorning walls in Puerto Vallarta or in the southwest. Uh, anyway, when Trish told me about Roberto, I remembered I remembered him. I was watching him paint a bicycle frame. I think back in, nine, in 2018, I think it was. And so I have a picture of him doing that. He was out in front of Bar La Playa doing that a couple of years back. So I took a picture of him back then, as I said. And I dug it up. I stuck it in the show notes. Check that out. Uh, anyway, as a real estate agent, um, I end up with lots of stuff. And if you were to ask any realtor, uh, that, you know, who's been in business long enough, um, ask them how much stuff that they have in their house that belong to former home sellers. They, they will literally point all around their house and tell you where certain pieces came from. Trust me on this; it actually happens. And I've got, I got the tool. I've got tools. I've got the coolest uh, tile cutting kit. I've got, I've got really nice pieces of furniture. I've got guitars. I collect, I collect axes. I've got axes. I collect guitars. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, clients that are moving away, they are looking to get rid of stuff, and they want anybody that they can to take stuff off their hands. And it's usually the realtor. So anyway, uh, getting back to Roberto, I found a pair of boots at one of the houses that I was cleaning out that I had sold. They were almost new. They fit me fine. And so I took them down to my local uh, shoemaker 
And I told him what I wanted to do was I wanted him to paint him black or dye him black, I guess. And because, you know, I have this guy in Mexico that I want to paint the shoes and make them all fancy for, for line dancing. So, so he dyes them and he finishes them up and he says, I'll, I won't put any wax on these so that the paint will, will adhere to the boot better. So that's, that's what happened. And I took him down to Roberto and I uh, asked him if he would paint the boots, and he did, and he did a great job. So, again, I got a picture of that in the show notes. You want to check that out if you can. Uh, and then after he did the boots, I thought about, you know, what else I could get him to paint. And I, as I said, I, I collect acoustic guitars. I've been hoarding a bunch of them. So I decided that I would strip one down to the bare wood and sand and finish and get it ready, and then paint the body and the neck a nice solid blue color. And then I took it down with me, and I said, Roberto, do your magic. And he did. He did a great job. Uh, I'm still putting a lacquer finish on it right now, but and then I'll restring it. But uh, it looks absolutely cool. So I, I've got pictures of both the boots and the guitar in the show notes. And, of course, I can't wait to get that thing strung up and be able to play it again. And what I'm getting at is you got to check out Roberto's work. Like I said, I've got pictures of all that stuff, the boots, the guitar, in the show notes, as well as links to Roberto's Facebook page at Vallarta Art by Roberto. And I've got his Instagram page, too, at Painted Art by Roberto. And uh, links to both of those pages, as well as a map that will take you to Roberto's place, which, as I said, is right next door to Bar La Playa, uh, on Lazaro Cardenas, right across the street from Tile Park PV. I love his work, and I don't mind drinking next door to his little closet either. So thank you, Trisha. Thank you so much for uh, turning me on to Roberto Lazaro. And uh, currently, I'm stripping and sanding another guitar for my next trip, and we'll see how he does on that one, too. I I'm not necessarily going to be using it to play... But I'm thinking about just, you know, displaying it. And anyway, looks really cool. Think about what you might have Roberto paint and bring it over to him. It doesn't cost much at all. And he does a really good job. And he really likes the challenge. So go see him. Uh, last week I mentioned that I experienced a couple of kind of uncomfortable taxi rides um, when I was down for Dia de los Muertos. Now, I'm pretty sure that two of those rides had to do with the location that we were staying. And um, because we, we were staying over at the Hotel Rosita uh, for the last three nights of our stay, and the taxis, what they do is they line up across the street from the hotel uh, against the curb over on a Avenida Mexico, over at the CTO over there. And um, they take passengers in, 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 in order, right? They don't just... I mean, no matter how large the car is. So when Debbie and I wanted to go from the Rosita to our friend's house, which was just up the hill, you know, which is normally like a 60 peso ride, uh, just right up the hill in Cinco de Diciembre. And again, it's straight up. But the vehicle that was waiting in line was this 12-passenger tour van. And guess what? Well, we had to hop in this 12-passenger tour van and the driver you know, was looking at us, where do you want to go? And I said, right up the hill, you know, straight up the hill, right over there. And, you know, wh what do you think this driver was thinking? He was thinking, what What are you doing in my van? And it's like, yeah, it's fine. You know, I'll go to another car. No, 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 I'll have to take you. And he just takes it. He's muttering. He's like cussing under his breath the whole way up there. Uh, then the next time, you know, I, I tipped him 20 pesos. He's here, just here. Jeez. And then another time, the same thing happened. We were heading to Extapa. We were going to interview Salvador Carrillo over at his restaurant, La Tienda Grande. And again, a 12-passenger van is sitting there first in line. And so it took the two of us during rush hour over to Extapa. And he was so pissed. He was so mad. He was, again, muttering under his breath. But at least he had a friend uh, who was sitting gunshot with him. And so they commiserated together with one another on this trip. We couldn't believe it. You know, it's like, 
Couldn't we just get in a smaller cab? But no, no, they've got rules, you know, you can't do that. But, you know, in the end, actually, they were actually pretty nice. Um, they dropped us off at the restaurant, which was closed. It was, it was obviously closed. Uh, and uh, they didn't realize that we were meeting Salvador to interview him. And they figured, you know, that we were just stupid Americans. And they actually came back and wanted to know if we wanted, you know, to get a ride back. After they went, they went around the block and... And Salvador was just a little bit late, so they went around the block, and they came back to make sure that we didn't need a ride back. And So in the end, even though they were ticked off, it, they were, ended up being real nice. And and the third ride, the third ride happened the same day, that, that very same day uh, that we went to Extapa. Uh, we left that interview with Chef, Chef Salvador. We took an Uber over to Puerto Magico, uh, and we did an interview over at Blake's, uh, Blake's just opened up over at the port. And uh, anyway, after the interview, we walked out. We requested a taxi. And the guy in charge calls this guy over. He pulls up, looking really, really agitated. So I ask him, you know, before I get into, before I get into any car, before I get into any taxi, I always ask him how much. And he says, 100 pesos. That guy over there told me I could only charge you 100 pesos. It's <laughs> my... Anyway, we're looking at each other, and we got in, and uh, that's when Mr. Toad's wild ride started, and oh, man, the guy just couldn't. He was muttering. He was, oh, the gas prices. Oh, I got to run the air conditioner. Oh, how can I make a living like this? It was, it was a little bit frightening, right? I mean, you know, I know that ride, that ride should probably cost around 150, 180 pesos, so, so finally... Finally, we reached the Rosita, and uh, the dude looked like he was ready to cry. So I handed him 150 pesos and <laughs> told him to get a bag of weed and chill, dude. Debbie could not believe that ride. Anyway, uh, talking about taxi rides, I uh, wanted to tell you about our trip down to uh, to El Tuito and uh, then over to Maito. We, uh, we spent a night over at the Hotel Maito Paradise Resort and beach club over there. And uh, so it was it was pretty cool. We we broke up our trip this time down. So we spent, you know, three days in town and then one night in Maito and then four nights back in town again. So it was a nice little way to kind of break up the, the trip, I thought. And uh, now to get to Maito, you know, I like to take the bus, the, the El Tuito bus. Uh, and then I like to call my, my buddy Javier, my favorite taxista over in El Tuito. And then he takes me over to Maito. So anyway, first off, most important, uh, make a note, the bus to El Tuito, which used to be on the corner of Aguacate and Carranza, right across from Marisco Cisneros, isn't there anymore. They're building a new condo right on the corner there. They knocked down a bunch of old buildings. So now you got to walk south along Aguacate just a little bit further to uh, to Basilio Badillo. And that's where the, the bus is going to be for at least for a while. I don't know if they're going to change it when they finish building the, the new condo. But uh, anyway, I'm going to really miss. They had a really, they had an Abarotis store over there on the corner over on Carranza and Aguacate. And of course, that's gone. And I did not pay any attention to what was there on the corner of Basilio Badillo and uh, Aguacate. But anyhow, and remember that the El Tuito bus is the same bus that you're going to be taking to get to the Botanical Garden. So, um, and by the way, the gardens are now open. They're open seven days a week for high season. And as of today, they also raised their entry fee from 200 to 300 pesos. So they went from 10 to 15 U.S. to get into the garden. Um, anyway, we took the bus to El Tuito, where we stopped in and picked up a sandwich for our ride down to the beach. Over in Maito, we stopped over to see Maddie and Jesse, and they have expanded their, their restaurant. It's Bigger and better than ever. Uh, Provecho Pane Panini's Pizza y Mas. And so I asked him, what's going on? What's new? And Maddie said, lots. So I said, tell us about it. So 
got out my recorder and recorded. So let's go right now and let's go to Maddie and Jesse's place. Jess steps from the bus stop at the town plaza in El Tuito. We're going now to Provecho Pane Panini's Pizza y Mas. And let's hear what's new from Maddie James in El Tuito, Cabo Corrientes, Jalisco, Mexico. We are at Provecho Restaurant here in El Tuito. And uh, Maddie, thanks for talking to me today. Hey, thank you for coming out again. We always enjoy it when you stop by. Uh, so you were telling me you've got uh, some new things coming on your menu. What's going on? Yes. Um, since you were last year, we've expanded the restaurant, doubled the size, and we've given ourselves a little more kitchen space. So in about two weeks, probably mid-November, we're going to launch a new line of pastas on top of our pizzas and paninis and salads that we already have. Um, we're going to be looking at a daily constant of on the menu about six different pastas from pasta puttanesca to pasta primavera, spaghetti and marinara with Italian sausage or veggies, and all those good Italian classics. Um, about once a week, we are going to have a kind of like a date night special. It'll be one or two, two nights a week. We're not sure exactly yet, but we'll have a weekly Italian themed pasta special, whether it be like. Uh, the chicken cacciatore or spaghetti and meatballs. Uh, it'll change every week, but we'll always have our six staples plus a new one every week. So we're excited to get it going and get more into the Italian world of El Tuito. Uh, yeah, the Italian world of El Tuito is right. I will right, we'll remind everybody what, what else you serve, what else you have here at, uh, at Provecho. We still are serving our uh, homemade pizzas. We have medium and large um, the large are very large. We, over the last year, have increased our number of pizzas to 17 different flavors and options. Um, we've got 12 different paninis that we offer, and we're always adding new ones of those as well. And we always do homemade salads. All of our sauces are here homemade in-house, and all of our ingredients are locally sourced if we can. Some of the higher-end Italian ingredients we also, we all, of course, have to import, but... Um, our main focus is quality, good flavor, good taste, and consistency. So, so far, two years in, we're getting something right, I think. I think you are, too. Your food is delicious. Um, anything new and interesting happening in Tuito? Anything out, out of the, out, outstanding? Uh, you know, Tuito is, is growing. Uh, since I've been here seven years, it's gotten a lot, lot bigger. Um, there's that I can think of, there's three new housing developments that they are in the middle of putting roads, plumbing, electric into. Uh, it's, it's different to see. It's, it's neat to see. You know, there, there's pros and cons of any growth. But I think if we do it right and uh, respect our infrastructure and, and continue down the right path of going the right way with it, it, it could work out good for everybody. Um, I just uh, I don't want to see it go the wrong way where the infrastructure can't keep up with it. But as a community, um, it's still a wonderful place to be. Everyone's together. It's the same old, same old around here. Nothing really changes. We stick to pretty much the same routine, but it's still a great place to be. It certainly is. Well, I want to thank you very much for letting me come on by and saying hi and, uh, you know, finding out what's new and interesting at Provecho in El Tuito. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thank you. You take care. We'll see you next time. All right. Thank you, Maddie. Thanks for that update. And uh, hey, y'all make sure that you stop in and you say hello to Maddie and Jesse and try out some of their new dishes. Um, now, one of the sad things that I learned while I was in El Tuito was when I asked Maddie why I was having such a hard time getting hold of Javier, my favorite taxi driver in El Tuito. Um, anyway, I, I've had... A, Javier on the show, and I'm on a couple of times. But according to Maddie and Jesse, Javier, like many other taxi drivers in El Tuito, had nothing to do during the pandemic. Uh, there was no work because nobody was taking taxis. There were no tourists. So Javier, unfortunately, turned to the bottle. And uh, um, Maddie said that sometimes they'd find him, you know, passed out in his taxi, all messed up. And, Anyway, they said he lost his little family and he had to move back to his father's home uh, in Maito. Defeated and addicted and just another victim of 
the response to the pandemic that ruined the lives of so many. Just, just another statistic. So we walked out of Provecho, and after checking the town square for a taxi, we ducked into a tienda to find out if we could call a cab, and they called us one. And 15 minutes later, Arturo shows up. He has a very nice taxi, and he asked where we want to go, and I tell him we want to go to Maito. Asked him how much he'd charge, and uh, he, he must have figured that I'd been there a couple times before because he said, uh, well, how much do you usually pay? And I told him, oh. 600 pesos, which, of course, is about 300 U.S., and he said, that's fine, hop on in. So we hopped in and, um, you know, went on that 50-minute ride down the mountain to the beach. And on the way, Arturo and I chatted in Spanish. Arturo's English was almost non-existent, but I would recommend him in a minute, and so would Debbie. Uh, She loved the way that he drove, and... We talked a little bit about how, how Javier was always my driver when I was in Tuito, and he pointed out Javier's dad's house when we drove past, which I recognized because I'd been there before with Javier. And I really, I wanted him to stop, but Debbie said no. Tell, tell Arturo to keep going. So I imagine it was better that way. And um, we arrived at the Hotel Maito, and had a really wonderful time. Uh, we had a lovely room. We had some drinks and appetizers. We watched the sunset, listened to the ocean. Uh, the waitress even let us smoke a doobie in the restaurant. Really? <laughs> hey, look at hey. We made sure there weren't any kids. We we promise there weren't any kids around. So we uh, anyway we we arranged a, a return trip with Arturo. Uh, before you know, he left to go back home and make sure that you do that too because whenever you go out to Maito, you're going to have to get a ride back and you, you, you've got to arrange that. So we did. And uh, we said come back at 3 o'clock in the afternoon the next day and he did and gave us a uh, ride back to the plaza in El Tuito where we caught the bus back to Puerto Vallarta. And yeah, it was great. It was a good break in the action. Three nights, like I said, in Vallarta, a night in Maito, and then the last four in Vallarta was just perfect. So as for Arturo, uh, I have his phone number for his WhatsApp. It's in the show notes. Arturo is taxi number 10 in El Tuito. His English is limited, but when I asked him if he was interested in helping you guys out there, he said, yep, absolutely. So um, I guarantee you he's very steady and very trustworthy. And he says he's been driving taxis for 30 years. He's got a really nice vehicle, too. So look for his number in the show notes if you're planning on going to El Tuito and then you need a taxi to get down to Maito. Once again, Arturo is taxi driver number 10 in El Tuito. I want to thank those of you who got a hold of me and wished my wife well on her journey with her diagnosis of breast cancer. She's doing exceptionally well. So uh, thank you for your notes of encouragement. I shared all of them with her, and she is grateful for all of them, too. So thank you very much. Um, She's going to be just fine. Okay, Uh, once again, I find myself without enough time to talk about the trend Maya. So hopefully we'll talk about uh, AMLO's pet project next week. Uh, But let's get right to our guest, Patrick Pickett from Pat's Plates. Uh, where uh, expats can get help for vehicle registration and driver's licenses in Puerto Vallarta and actually all along the Bahia de Banderas. Now, as I said at the beginning of the show, there are a great many of you who may never need PAT services because you're thinking, hey, I could do that myself, or hey, I don't plan to live in paradise, or look, I'm a vacationer, I just visit, or Maybe you're saying, I don't plan to own a vehicle when I get to Mexico. Many of my guests came to Vallarta thinking, I don't need a car. There's taxis, there's Ubers, there's buses, there's there's combis, collectivos, there's scooters, bicycles. But just remember, things can change over time, and we've seen this time and time again. Many of you are going to find that you're going to crave the freedom of having your own wheels. Now, one of the couples that 
we actually have spoken with twice on this podcast, Ellie and Russell Renz. Uh, they're the couple that immigrated from New Zealand and settled in Mexico. If you remember them. Uh, yeah, they, they came here just by pulling Mexico out of a hat. Well, if you have been following the show, you know that they actually broke down and they purchased a vehicle so they could enjoy the freedom of the road. And we talked about that. And we've heard their adventures, right? And in one of our conversations, Russell talked about Pat and Pat's plates and about how he was very helpful in taking care of his Mexican registration and all that driver's license stuff. So at the time, I thought it would be a good idea to bring Pat on the show. And as I said, Pat has lots of information that goes beyond driver's licenses and Mexican car registration. So stick around for this conversation. You'll be glad that you did. Now, to get Pat to share his expertise with you, I had to invite him to breakfast, you know, somewhere where he couldn't say no. So let's go right now to a table on the beach with a tablecloth, find stemware and flatware and linen napkins at one of my favorite breakfast places in the world, Lapa Lapa. <laughs> let's put our feet in the sand with a view of the Los Muertos Pier, and let's meet Patrick Pickett. Pat, from Pat's Plates, expat help for vehicle registration and driver's licenses in Puerto Vallarta and on the Bahia de Banderas in Jalisco and in the state of Nuevo Nayarit in Mexico. Pat, thanks for coming on the show today. My pleasure. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from and uh, what was your path that led you to Puerto Vallarta? I, uh, I grew up in Portland, Oregon, as a matter of fact, and uh, I consider myself, I guess, uh, a rain refugee of sorts, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah. And cold, right? Because it's cold, no? It, it's not cold, per se, but, you know, it's cold enough when you've got, you know, at the time, it seemed like nine months of rain a year. Yeah. And so that was, uh, you know, so, yeah, I, I uh, came down here for a wedding originally in 98 for my cousin's wedding. I said, ooh, this is nice. I like this. And a few years later, out of college, my cousin had been living down here half the year for the wintertime and then back in Portland for the summertime. I said, I want to do that. And so I uh, came down here and had my cousin and some aunt and uncle living down here and got involved in the hospitality business and uh, actually timeshare, as a matter of fact. And uh, uh -oh, you industry. were one of those guys. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was, it was pretty funny. I was so green when I got started that the people, I think they just took pity on me and, and bought a timeshare from me because I was just, you know, like I came down with one pair of slacks and, you know, a couple dress shirts and uh, right away was like, those pants aren't going to work. Let's go to Lambs and get you squared away with, you know, some new pants. And, you know, I, I had a good time and I was, you know, just an Oregon kid chatting with people and eventually uh, I enjoyed it. I worked at uh, what was the Mine Palace, turned into Vedanta and worked with uh, the same people. So people that were existing owners and, uh, you know, just they'd buy, have no idea what they bought. And I was like, uh, you know, the, the fire crew or whatever. So they'd show up, you know, sometimes sideways, you know, for their first vacation. I was promised this, da 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 and uh, I just readjust their expectations, and uh, a lot of them, you know, found uh, found me likable, and I'd make suggestions maybe if it made sense for them to change their membership, and that's what I did, working with the existing members there for a number of years. Very good, very yeah. good. So you're a problem solver. I, yeah, yeah. That's kind of what led me into this business of yes. uh, license plates and car registration. All right, so all how that did that stuff. happen? I mean, you know, did it, did it just, is it something that popped in your head, or is it like, other than, you know, you, you got to make some money, right? You know, what, I, what got you started with this, with well, this licensing? Thing? Yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of funny. I didn't need to make any money. I was been working the ho I had been working in the hospitality industry for 14, 15 years. Yeah. And it came off more as like, okay, well, I need to get my driver's license. Uh, I moved from, you know, Nyarit to PV, so I had to change my plates over. <laughs> you know, uh, okay. and so you get you there to the office, that, and you yeah. bring all the paperwork, and they tell you, "Okay, uh, um, no, you need to have this stamped." 
Now you go drive all the way back to Nyarit to get that stamp. Anyway, so I did it for myself, and then a friend asked for help, and then a friend of a friend. So it grew a little bit there. But what was really the impetus for the business was uh, my spouse had gone to school, graduated here from a local university, top of their class, and they had gone to interview at some places. And my spouse, Linda, some of you know, lovely Linda, uh, went to interview at some of these companies, and they wouldn't give her a job. So they asked her to go ahead. Yeah. They she asked Mexican? her to. Yeah, she's Mexican. She's a, you know, a woman. Uh, and so she went, for example, to the Mazda dealership, and they had asked her to come interview for their head uh, marketing position. And when she gets there, they go, oh, um, you're married? She goes, yeah. And they go, your husband lets you work? Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. wow. And, you know, she's like, yeah, yeah, he's, you know. And then it was, you know, in, it was like written down on, there on her resume that this information which is uh, just illegal you know yeah, but yeah. and the next well, question in the states or is it, le- is it it's illegal, illegal here, here. it's is illegal it? here and then yeah. the next question is you have a baby who's going to take care of your baby when you work you know and so <laughs> wow yeah that's we're kind of back foul. a generation or two yeah, here in you know, some we're, regards we're, we're back 10 years you know it's, i figure that's about well, that, i about would, that. I would, like maybe I would you, go back 20 or 30 or something okay. in some regards yeah, yeah you know there's yeah. a beauty here but there is definitely you know that other side of mexico wow and so that's so, just they were just afraid that she would not be able to come into work and do her her, her duties because she was a mom or yeah, they, and I guess they were so. going like, "Hey, dude, why aren't you? Why you aren't know. you? Why are you letting your wife go to work and stuff like that?" Is well, that yeah. kind of I mean, you do have the machismo, like you know, like the husband says, "You know, my wife stays at home; she doesn't work." You know, but I mean, you know, we're not that kind of family, but more of a modern family. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, I'm. Yeah, a feminist of sorts in that regard, I guess, or just I normal. Are, I don't normal. know. I mean, to I us, that's normal, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that's totally normal for us. So yeah, and so uh, when that happened, it was kind of like, okay, so if she couldn't get these head jobs because she was married and she had a kid, uh, and it was sad because her classmates that had graduated from the same university at the same time were younger, were single or not married, didn't have kids. And they walked into these, uh, you know, more management marketing jobs and took off. And now they're doing fantastic. And now they're married and now they have kids. But they would not hire uh, unmarried. uh, No married woman with kids. Yeah, married woman with kids, though. So that's where I started kind of growing the business and came up with that for really for Linda to have her own income and her own independence. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, when finally when COVID hit, you know, definitely I had to leave the hospitality industry. We had a new baby on the way. And, um, you know, thank you to all those clients out there that support us, that choose us because yeah, now this is basically our, our main gig in addition to, uh, the condos, Airbnbs that we have here in downtown PV. Yeah. 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 All right. So tell us, when people come to you, I mean, why would why do people need plates? What's the deal with that? Uh, you do and you don't. I mean, to you know, like people have people people come here and they want to do things right, and I think that's a very correct thing to do because, as foreigners, you know, we want to have all our, all our ducks in a row, you know, sure. uh, because you don't want to be in a in a gray area if it can be avoided to have any issues with uh, authorities or anything like that. Sure, yeah. And so, yeah, it's important to have, you know, if possible, you know, your registration for your vehicle, you know, in your name, paid up, uh, have a driver's license. And you also, you know, uh, you get treated differently. You know, a lot of people comment on that. You know, you got a Mexican driver's license? They go, ah, you live here. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a warning. You know, versus, you know, the uh, the tourist like, oh, well, this is a big ticket. And uh, <laughs> and we can maybe make a deal. And <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's it, that, the mordida, you know, or what they, they, what, how they refer to the, the bribe down here has changed a lot where uh, nobody's going to ask you for a bribe. It's now uh, you offer one. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. So we're you know we're we always recommend never pay never you know never pay a bribe. Always ask for the ticket whenever possible. You know. Yeah. Well, let's we'll we'll talk yeah. about that in a yeah. minute. But let's talk about let's get back to about what the what, what do, exactly do people come to you for? They come to you for 
to get a Mexican driver's license, yeah. number one. Yeah, driver's uh, license. And then uh, they maybe bought they, a car. Get a, they bought a car and they, they need new car plates. registration in their name. Yes, absolutely. What if what if someone's here with a car from the United States or from Canada and they have Canadian plates? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So people, we, we love it when people reach out to us and say, hey, um, I'm planning on coming down what do i need to do and we kind of kind of guide them because they can bring down their foreign plated car as a tourist for up to six months or as a temporary resident for up to four years there's special extensions that are supposed to be filed once they arrive here and all that stuff and it almost never works out where they get their deposit back but they <laughs> but uh you know so we, we just kind of guide people and you know our philosophy is to try to treat others the way we would want to be treated that's the big thing terms of our service and just guiding people and giving them the knowledge that they need to make the right decision because mm-hmm. some people are going to say oh you know what you know i'm going to go permanent resident after four years i want to go ahead and we'll just we'll just buy a car down there you know other right, people you right. know they're i just chatting with somebody that said you know i'm in the financial position where i have five to five to six thousand maybe eight thousand dollars to buy a car but i already have like a really nice subaru here and i go okay well we check no, you can't import it, but my personal recommendation is bring your Subaru down for the four years, enjoy it, and at the end of the four years, go ahead and drive it out and sell it and see what the market has to offer. Because right now, you can't really buy anything of quality. You're not going to buy a 2013 comparable Subaru right now for ten, you know, ten thousand dollars. Right? No, no right. not even. I'm sorry, you know, for six or eight thousand dollars. Right. Right, or you use cars right now are, are, no. are a premium. I did a post yesterday, you know, like you can find some $2,000 beaters, but it's a beater. Yeah, yeah, you know? and you better believe it too, right? Yeah. And you're going to be changing the uh, the suspension on day three. Uh, right? Actually, <laughs> actually, you're right. Yeah, one of them needed like, you know, a $200 rebuild of the power steering rack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you get what you pay for. Yeah, indeed. All right, so, <clears throat> all right, so you, if someone comes to you and says, um, uh, Pat, I need uh, I need some help. Uh, I, uh, now wait now wait a minute. Now we were, we, I was talking about changing license plates from a U.S. license plate to a Mexican license plate. Um, uh, what you're saying is that you really don't do that because you know you only have four years with that car down. It here. depends. It depends on the vehicle. So the most important things is you know is the vehicle NAFTA was it manufactured in the United States, Canada, or Mexico? In that case, it's allowed to be imported into Mexico at oh. the border if it's five years or older. Now I don't have an exact understanding. I always share with my clients a little template that I have, and I say, okay, here's the processes other clients have, exp- have explained to us, and here's some import brokers. They contact directly mm-hmm. to get the exact price. But, yeah, if the car is five years or older uh, and it's NAFTA, it can be imported. Okay. All right. So in that case, it, that four-year thing does not, does not uh, take effect, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's an either-or. So you can either bring it down on a temporary import permit, a tip, right? Mm-hmm. Or you can import it permanently. Okay. So, for example, the Subaru that the client had was Japanese. It can't be permanently okay. imported. So they can bring it down on their temporary residency for up to four years. And then after the four years, they're supposed to drive it drive out. Drive it back. Not everybody does. You right. know? I tell right. people, I say, contact me You know, when you get closer and let's see what your options are from there. Okay. All right. So keep that in mind, you guys. I mean, if, uh, if, you've, if you're in that situation, pick up the phone to probably pay you to... To yeah. pay you well to get a hold of Pat. You, yeah, I mean, one of the biggest things is people go, you know, I have this car. It's a 2003, you know, uh, Chevy pickup. Or if it's 2000, you know, uh, 15, Toyota Highlander or something like that. And I go, okay, well, yeah, you know, so here's a template for how to import it permanently. Uh, it might cost $2,000. It might cost $8,000. And they go, oh, I don't want to pay $8,000 for a car that you have. Right. But at the same time, as you said, cars are really overpriced right now. So one of our clients, they brought down a 2016 Chevy Equinox, all the bells and whistles. And uh, it was $8,000 to import it. Right? Right. But they have their car. They know the history. They know everything about it. Now it's all legit. We got the nine eight plates on it. And so they're happy. They don't have to worry about that because, you know, it's... They don't, you can't buy anything for $8,000 or 20000 <laughs> That car would be point, yeah. way, way more. So in that case, it's 
important for people to go ahead and say, okay, you're not paying twice for your car. You're paying to legalize your car or to import your car as a Mexican yeah. vehicle. Even though it might just hurt a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, hey, better the devil you know than the devil you don't, right? Get right in. Yeah, you know? exactly right. So it can be. Yeah. Um, all right. So what's the process? Someone comes to, someone uh, contacts you, says, uh, Pat, I uh, need a, let's say I'm a Mexican driver's license. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what do you do? What do you need from that person? Oh, to yeah. Ask to them a that? couple preliminary questions. Are you a legal resident? Do you have a local bank statement or utility bill in your name? And they say, yes, yes. And say, great. Yeah, we can help you. Uh, here's a, here's a template for, you know, making deposit to us and going ahead and getting it going. All right, so you use templates, right? So you use all these great tools mm-hmm. so that, first of all, no step is missed, right? Because it's all there. We want everything in writing. Yeah. You, you right? know, that's, that's, it's, it's so hard, and I think there's a lot of frustration for people down here. They, they think or they misunderstood, and so with us, everything being in writing makes it really easy that, you know, hey, it's all there. Well, you were told this, this, and this, and they, they get a little confused. Hey, let's go back to remember when we talked about, or this was written down, da 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 what so, if, yeah, what if they don't have a bill in their name? What if they don't have a utility bill in their name? What happens uh, then? We have solutions. I mean, like I said, I'm a problem solver. So we discovered there is at the Electra uh, store, where, you know, where people are always buying their motorcycles and stuff like yeah, that, you know, yeah. your, your, your layaway place. Uh, they can go ahead and generate a bank statement in about as little as 20 to 60 minutes for you with any CFE or uh, Telmex bill. And okay. so it's fantastic. So, so anybody, yeah, exactly. So we can go ahead and use that along with the temporary residency, the passport, the vehicle documentation to go ahead and get the car or the driver's license. Isn't that a little sketchy? Not at all. It's you. Uh, another client of ours. I was doing a legalization the other day in Nayarit. One of my clients, John. You know, he he understands it. He specializes in boats, and he was talking about. He goes, you know, here in Mexico, they just want to be able to check a box. They can check a box. That's fine. And what you've done is you've gone ahead and presented a valid bill here to this banking institute. You've presented your residency, your passport. Boom. Here's your here's your bank statement. It's uh-huh. just, and that's the great thing is it can be done in 20 to 60 minutes. Whereas, you know, if you open up a uh, CFE, anybody knows how CFE is. Oh, my God. My goodness. That's very. All right, so tell everybody what a CFE oh, is. Oh, yeah. CFE is le- the Mexican electrical company. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. purgatory. It's definitely, <laughs> you know. I've and seen Telmex, the lines. I've seen the lines. <laughs> yeah, and Telmex is a much better. And Telmex is a national phone system, you know, here as well. Yeah. It's not, but it is. Thank you, Carlos Slim, right? Yeah, go Carlos. And so, uh, so you know, you, people open the contract and they want to give me the contract. I say, that's not a contract. I need a monthly statement. It has to say estado de cuenta, you know, statement of account. I have a date within three months, their address, their name. And so, you know... The, the Banco Azteca, the Aztec Bank, is the, is the fastest, easiest option. You open it up with 100 pesos. Really? Yeah. I mean, like an American, like me, could do that? Yeah, you. Exactly. You yeah. go ahead and borrow JR or somebody else. <laughs> hey, JR, you know, can yeah. I borrow your... Can I have your CFE bill? Your, your, borrow your CFE bill. have it back for you in a couple hours, right? Uh-huh. Go down the street to Electra, and boom, they're on the spot. They can go ahead and open up an account for you. No kidding. And it's a pretty cool little account. You know, it's a debit card. You can use to make some payments, do some transfers. You know, it's not... Uh, you know, it's it's actually it's pretty decent, dude. You know? I'm going to go do that. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I <laughs> recommend it. Have the options easier than Intercam. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm thinking right now. Wow. All right. Um, all right. So now yeah. you've got all that stuff. Now what do you do? You've got you've got the you got the CFE bill. You've got the the bank statement. And now you now you're going to be helping them to yeah. To, to get we the, we don't ever want people to feel an obligation. We give the information, basic information, away for free. So if somebody okay. wants to get their own driver's license, they want to do their own car things. I actually have templates and write ups, uh, you know, on my Facebook page to explain how to do it themselves. Because okay. I'm not for everybody, okay. right? You yeah. know, I am a little bit on the spendier side, but you know, like I show up at your house for certain things or meet you, you know. But uh, so we explain to people how to do it if they want to proceed with us. Uh, yeah, you know they go ahead and meet us at the driver's license office, and typically within ninety minutes they're walking out the door with their driver's license in hand. Yeah, if they're doing their car registration. You know we ask for you know the deposit, uh, some scans of the paperwork in advance, and then head over to their house, pick up the paperwork, process it. Might take three days, might take 
a week, three weeks. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Times of COVID as well, right? Yeah, sure. And then drop it off at their house. So for people that are, you know, really time sense of time conscious where they don't have time to run around and go to these offices and deal with the Spanish and the headache and all that stuff. It's very beneficial to us. Yeah. Or we're very beneficial to them, I guess, is what I should rather say. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did you, uh, where'd you learn Spanish? I just picked it up. Really? Yeah. Your actually, Spanish is great. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. I actually went to school and learned German and lived in Germany for two years. Ah, okay. And graduated. Sprechen Sie Deutsch. Yeah, yeah. ganz viel. Yeah. So when you're in line, you I mean you're you're using the Spanish? Uh, you're 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 doing you're doing all this stuff for them, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, all right. So what else do you do? You do the, now in the plates. Let's talk a little bit about plates. Car registration. Yeah, car registration. Yeah. Uh, right now we have about a month. Right now where there's a presidential decree where we can legalize foreign plated cars that meet the qualifications. Oh, really? Yeah. If it's 2016 or older, if it's NAFTA, U.S., Canadian, or U.S. made. And entered Mexico before uh, October 19th, 2021, we're able to legalize those vehicles for the most part. Issues do arise with the Mexican system. We're trying to resolve them, but unfortunately, not all are resolvable. But uh, we've helped, yeah, definitely two, three dozen people legalize their vehicles. Yeah, so that's a great thing, you know, for a lot of those people, because otherwise they'd have to go back to the border eventually and pay two, three, four, five, eight thousand dollars to legalize that vehicle. Yeah. Or probably import it. Import it. Right. The traditional. So this is a nice option for them. It's a huge so savings. Yeah. So it's been keeping us busy right now. Uh, but yeah, year round though we have people moving down and buying Mexican vehicles and uh, just handling the transfer of ownership for them to get in their name. And that's in it's important because um, for insurance purposes. In fact I'll be doing a uh, thing with Antonio Trejo from Guardian Insurance yeah. in in a, in a few days. Really? To explain that, because I don't even know all the details. But uh-huh. there's some basic stuff I know that, you know, I want to be able to cover with my clients, just like the service you're providing, and I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah. So, uh, in your experience uh, for, let's say, car insurance, auto insurance, what's give us a kind of a comparison what you're paying for auto insurance in the United States as compared to what you're paying for auto insurance here in Mexico. It's typically a fraction of the cost, you know, especially for Canadians. So they love that. Really? As well. Why is, yeah. Well, what's you the can, deal with Canadians? Uh, well, Canadians oh, they're pay just, they're, ridiculous. They're nice because they're so nice. Yeah. Well, and they're nicely taxed. <laughs> you know. I mean, hey, uh, I love Canada. My great grandparents were Canadian, um, but they pay a lot of tax, and they have, a, yeah. I, in my personal opinion, a very high quality of life. You know. Um, but yeah, when they come down here, they're pretty shocked because you can get, you know, your bare bones insurance policy liability only for two thousand pesos a year. All right. Do you know what bucks. 2000 is, you guys? Yeah, yeah $100. $100. A year. A year. Dude, no wonder people are coming down here like crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know. Now, but how, how about cars? When you're buying cars in, in uh, Puerto Vallarta, are they, do they seem to be pretty expensive? Yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty expensive, and if they're older, they're pretty beat up. These cobblestones just do a number on the suspensions and the vehicles here. And then you also need to understand also that uh, Mexico doesn't have the same... Uh, car culture in terms of preventative maintenance, uh, especially yeah. here along the coast. You know, <laughs> a friend of mine was visiting town, and she's Mexican, and she goes, she goes, oh, yeah, me and my sister, you know, until it breaks, we don't worry about it. You know, the father's an engineer, and he's going like, no, no, you have to change oil. And they're like, <laughs> it's not broken, you know. <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind when I share with my clients, you know, buy a more recent vehicle if possible, you know, that's been better maintained. And if it hasn't, you know, just be ready for, you know, some gremlins to pop up. But, yeah, cars are, you know, used to be, if not still now, you know, anywhere from 30, 40, 60 percent more than vehicles back home. Yikes. Yeah, that's, right. that's crazy. Yeah. So that's kind of why I tell people, I say, you know, if you got a nice vehicle back home that qualifies for permanent importation, bring it down here. Because even with the cost of importation, it might cost the same or be comparable to what you'd cost to buy that vehicle down here, and your car vehicle's in a lot better condition. Exactly right. Yeah. I guess the key here is just to find some some old person who, who who's, who's, you know, spouse just died, and they're getting ready to go back to the United States or to Canada and, and buy their car. Well, there's, there's such an influx of people coming down, I think, yeah, you know. That's a challenge in a lot of those spouses. They're not going back. They're staying here, which is yeah, kind of beautiful. Yeah, it is kind of beautiful. You know, we were talking earlier before the podcast about the energy here, and, you know, it just it just keeps people here. But there's a, there's a couple websites. One's called CAVAC, 
K-A-V-A-K yeah. dot com, and that's based more, they have, you know, uh, places in Mexico City, Guadalajara, Monterey, and you can go online and buy your car sight unseen, but they're great about the documentation and showing everything, mm-hmm. and uh, you've got like a week to turn the car back in if you don't want it. Oh, wow. Yeah, a free trial, and then they've got, I can't remember if it's a month or three months of uh, uh, guarantee on anything. Which is pretty cool. That is cool. So that's good, you know. So if you got a little cash, if you're if you're looking over probably let's say seventy five hundred dollars, one hundred fifty thousand pesos, that would be some territory. But you do have to go to Guadalajara or Mexico City to pick up the car. Yeah, you know, which is actually kind of a fun drive. Sure, you can test drive it and see whether to make it home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if it doesn't, they turn it back. Turn around it back and around. Bring it back. You got that week, you know. So that that's one. And then there's there's a couple lots, but you know, you just. You need to be careful because a lot of people don't understand here in Mexico, um, the original sales invoice, the original factura, what they call a factura, from when the vehicle is sold, that is your ownership document. That's the title, you know, for the Americans. And on the back of it, you know, when you sell the car, you sign off on the back and you say, I release the rights to this, you know, uh, document, this vehicle to Bob Smith. And then Bob Smith is supposed to go ahead and take it to, you know, the office and get it stamped or processed. And uh, sometimes people don't do that. And so you'll have, you know, Bob sells it to, to you know, Juan, and Juan sells it. And if, if they don't take it in and get it uh, processed, registered at the office, when you buy that car, and you're the third name on the back right there, the government here goes, you're liable for all those people that didn't register the car in their name. Ooh. And here they have wow. a vehicle, yeah, and here they have a vehicle acquisition tax. So, for example, here in Jalisco, it's roughly 7%. So mm, if they value that vehicle, yeah, if they value that vehicle at you know, a uh, hundred thousand pesos, they're going to charge you seven thousand pesos for each unregistered owner. Oh, ouch! Yeah. yeah. So you know, there's three guys. All of a sudden, you, this car now, oh, it was cheap. I picked it up for you know one hundred fifty thousand, but it owes you know twenty one thousand pesos and an owner fees or something like that, yeah. or back registration. If somebody hasn't paid for the last five years, you know, in Nayarit, it's not an issue. It's Thirty-five dollars, seven hundred pesos a year, but Jalisco, uh, they whack one hundred and fifty dollars a year or more. Wow! Yeah, so it can add up pretty quick. So it's really important, maybe just do it in the right way. And yeah, just, and yeah, 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 not not have to worry about all that stuff. Again, we we have free you, templates. You, you, you that, discover that stuff though, right? You can discover that too. Yeah, or? so we do a free paperwork check. Yeah, you know, so somebody says I'm interested in buying a car, I send them the template, preferably by Facebook Messenger, so I can send it to them quick. Uh-huh. And uh, says, you're going to ask the person for this in Spanish, you know, the factura, the last five years payments, if there's an importation document, and just forward that to me, and I'll take a look. And I'll say, yeah, you're golden, go ahead, buy that car, or mm, this is going to be, you know, an issue, you're going to have to pay extra for this or that, and factor that into your negotiations, you uh-huh. know. And there's no obligation for the people to use us. Uh-huh. But typically they go, oh, okay, I trust you, I, I like you, I'll, I'll pay you the money to go ahead and, and do the transfer for me. Yeah, well, when you think about it, you're saving the money to begin with. You know, the the money that you're charging them is is a, a fraction of the money that they're, they're going to be saving anyway. In, in a lot of cases, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, am I right? <laughs> Not necessarily. No, no, you know, like I said, you know, we, you know, we we share what we charge what people feel is a, is a relatively fair price. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, if you buy a, you know, 50,000 peso car, you might go, ooh. <laughs> you know, everything out the door is going to be, you know, 12, 14, 15,000 pesos, you know, with our service fee included. They go, oh, ouch. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's interesting, actually, that uh, our, our, the people that send us the, the most referrals, obviously, are wonderful clients that use us. But also, you know, somebody says, well, I, I'm going to do it myself. I go, absolutely. You go to this office. Here's, here's a template. You go to this office, that office. Wait here in this line. Wait in that line. This could take about five hours. Bring copies of this. Da, 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 da. And then I'll get contacted by somebody. And they go, hey, remember my friend Jeremy? I go, no. And they'll go, well, Jeremy, you, you told Jeremy how to do it himself. Yeah. And he told me. Don't bother. Just use Pat. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeremy uh, learned his lesson the hard way. Well, yeah. you know, like said, right, exactly. But it, not right. everybody. I, I'm not. I'm not one to judge. You know, if you be, I obviously because I did it all myself. You know, yeah. Might right. go to my. Yeah. You did it. Yeah, I was going to say it goes back to my my, my uh, you know uh, Quebec family background. You know, or we're frugal McDougals. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. 
Um, all right. So, what other services that have we? Uh, any other services that maybe we've forgotten to talk about? It pretty much comes down to uh, expedited driver's licenses and handling transfers of ownership for for cars, okay. trucks. That's our niche. Yeah, that's what we do. All right. So, so um, lost plates, keep- replacement plates. You know, if it's license plates or driver's license, that's what we do. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, this is your man. If you've got an automobile down here and you need help. With any of that documentation. Yeah. Or if they want to bring a vehicle down, like I said, we'll, we'll just give them the information. We'll give the, you know, we'll give people the information and, the, and they go from there. Do you, do you ever get any pushback because you are a gringo and you're, you're doing work that maybe uh, Mexicans can do? Yeah. Yeah, I do. And it's funny because I'm a Mexican now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are? Are you a citizen I'm now? a dual citizen, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I actually just celebrated 17 years here in Mexico. Felicidades. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a cool thing. And, and I encourage a lot of other people to get dual citizenship if they can as well. After five years of permanent residence, they can do that. But, yeah, going back to your question... Yeah, there's comments there on Facebook going, you know, oh, choose a Mexican, you know, why are you taking jobs from Mexicans? And it's like, I'm an immigrant. I immigrated here, you know, I'm basically here full time. Yeah. And uh, there are uh, other people that will go ahead and do the same work that I do. That being said, it's a different level of service. Mm-hmm. You know, they're mm-hmm. going to be asking. They don't speak English. So, Okay. Can I ask for more money because I speak English? <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I don't, you know, anyways, it, it's kind of, it just kind of mystifies me that, you know, people would be, be like that. But yeah, I mean, our, our main thing is service. You look at our reviews, they're five star on Facebook. They're all five star. The recommendation is saying, thank you, Pat, you know, Pat, Linda, we, boom, we're there. You know, we come to their house if necessary. We make it so I have to do the visits, you know, uh, we want our clients in and out in the minimal amount of time possible. And when you do the traditional route uh, with a, you know, with somebody else that these people recommend, great. They can probably get the job done. Um, Sometimes there's corner cutting because what I see is people, the person helping them wants to save them money, but saving them money is going to bite them in the butt later on. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, And so with us, we we know our clients, you know, if they're buying a car, you can afford the tax. You can afford, you know, so let's do it right. Let's not mess this up. So, you know, we, we we do everything the way it's supposed to be done correctly. Yeah. You know, and there's none of that, you know. There's no cutting, finagling. There's no... There's no cutting corners corner because cutting, you, can, yeah. you can... Paperwork is so complicated here. And I think that's what people don't understand. And especially um, the poor Canadians. You know, my favorite poor Canadians. I mean, it's like... They go, they go into DMV in half an hour or less, 15 minutes, boom, they've got their transfer of ownership, everything's all set. Here is a multi-day effort, you know, and you have to make sure the sequence of paperwork is correct and, and this and that. And then the rules change. Yeah. So, you know, somebody that yeah. registered their car in Jalisco, you know, two, three years ago, and now they want to sell it to one of my clients. My client's like, I want to buy this car. It has Jalisco plates. I go... It's missing one of the facturas. It's missing part of the sequence because here they maintain, you know, from the very original document, you sequence on that original document the ownership. So, you know, it's anyways, boring but very complicated stuff. And so now that vehicle can't be registered in Jalisco in again, Jalisco. even though it already has a Jalisco plate. So never never again? They'd have to burn it? What do they have to do? Um, we can find other ways, <laughs> okay. you know. Yeah. And, and so, you know, we have different ways. You know, we prefer, obviously, Jalisco and Nayarit. And Nayarit's more, more lax. But, you know, sometimes we have to go to other states. Huh. Interesting. You know, Michoacan, Guerrero, you know. And, and wow. people make... <laughs> wow. they, and there's posts there, people... Pat sells fake plates, you know. It's like, okay, thanks, everything, Karen, you know, that Facebook group. And um, uh. <laughs> it's, it's like yeah, the plates we provide to our clients, they can verify immediately online in the respective uh, state website, and they're there. They yeah. appear. So they're not fake, you know, but we just... We have to find different options for sometimes, different people. Sometimes you're forced to to, to, to take, take another route. Right? TIM, this yeah. is Mexico. you yeah. got to find a way sometimes. Because if the clients bought the car, <clears throat> you can't leave them high and dry. we got to find the solution. And that's what people come to us for, yeah. for service and solutions. Yeah, excellent. Do you, do, you have, do you have any favorite charities here in town? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, 
you know, I came here with very little 17 years ago, and it's Puerto Vallarta and, you know, the Pijita Banderas, which has allowed me to have this amazing lifestyle, you know. And so we definitely give back to our community. Nice. We're big in the animals. We're big in the kids. Um, one of our most recent donations was to... Um, to help with like emergency vehicles there in Pajita Banderas, so to help pay for uh, repairs to the ambulance, uh, we paid for help pay for repairs for the fire truck. Uh, you know, we did that you know party up on the river last year when they did the the music. You know, so uh-huh. we donated and sponsored us over ten thousand pesos for that. Wow! Yeah. So we're you know we're typically five thousand, five thousand, ten thousand. Uh, the local. Um, Center of the Salud, the, the health state department for Jalisco, uh, Spay Neuter Clinic, their mobile clinic, they know they can contact us at any time if they need money to buy uh, medicine or sutures or whatever it is because we don't want people being turned away from their free Spay Neuter Clinic. Nice. So, you know, there, there's some big things. And <clears throat> one of the other things that we do all the time is actually driving out to San Juan, San Vicente. You know where that is? Out no, in I don't know where that is. You basically, you go towards Bucerias and you turn right at Mescalas and go almost all the way down to the end of the road. Okay. About an hour from PV. And there, there's this amazing uh, woman and her mother that have a cat rescue place. And they've got 340, 350 cats. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah, wow. it's actually pretty cool. It's I a bet. pretty neat thing. But one of the biggest issues for them is they need cat litter yeah, and, no and cat food. <laughs> and basically from Costco. And so typically every week or two weeks or three weeks when we can, we're taking out 15 bags of cat food out to them, driving it out there uh, to, you know, help make it easier wow. on, on the place. So we're hey, any clients out there, any people out there that want to go ahead and Help Feline Paradise, Parizo Felino, with the delivery. They pay for the food. They pay for the the litter. Yeah. They just need somebody to drive it out there. Really? We all, of course, go ahead and say, oh, okay, it's it's 8000 Give me a seven. You know, try yeah. to donate here and there with them, you know, as well as do delivery. But, oh, yeah, that's absolutely. Nice. And that's all right. Well, I'll have their contact in, uh, in the show notes, too. So make sure you look for that there if you've got a love for cats and you want to help out. That's, yeah. that's fantastic. Or if you don't like cats, it's okay. You can do that, too. <laughs> then go to kids. I mean, there's, there's Harold Sokolov is a, is a wonderful resource there in Bucerias. I don't know. Have you been interviewed with him? I have not, no. Get a hold of that guy. Hey, Harold and, and his wife are fantastic. They're, they really do a lot. And, you know like take the moment just to thank everybody else out there that's listening that does come down here you know whether you're here full-time or part-time or just for you know a week that that gives back to the community here because they appreciate it so much it makes a huge huge difference we appreciate that it does make some time on your schedule if you can uh to donate a little time and uh, it's it, it makes a big difference you will find it'll make mm-hmm. a big difference mm-hmm. in your trip and your experience as oh well oh my god how rewarding right right yeah all right, let's go from Pats, and let's go out in town. Just the, We're going to go do a little bonus round right now. Yeah, so I like that. Let's talk a little bit about food, because everybody likes to know of new places, I mean, old places, it doesn't really matter, yeah. but everybody's interested in what, what people eat and where they go. What kind of, uh, what do you like for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? What's your, what are your favorite breakfast places? Ooh, breakfast, uh, Cha is such a solid place. All right, now listen, I just, I heard about Cha, and I heard about the owner, who is a very special guy. Yeah. Uh, who I've got to go interview, by the way. Um, what do you like there when you go there? Uh, you know, all their food's just really good. Yeah, what kind of food is it? You know, it's uh, it's Mexican for the most part. Uh, they do have some pretty phenomenal waffles that uh, definitely walk home after those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very rich. Uh-huh. But uh, the food, the food's uh, it's good. It's got that authentic Mexican light taste, you know. And uh, the, you know, the chef in his kitchen do an amazing job. You're almost guaranteed to have to wait 15, 20, 30 minutes. And really? I hate waiting. I do not like waiting in lines, but that's one of the few places I will wait. Yeah. Where is it? It's over in Versailles. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's around the corner from uh, Barrio Bistro oh, and okay. just down from, um, uh, escapes the top of my head, um, the Argentinian guy. What's that place? His place had a fire downtown. Oh, oh um, yes. I'm, I've got to remember it. He'll it come to us. Yeah, it was, yeah. We'll edit and fix. Yeah, we'll figure that out. Yeah, we'll figure that out. <laughs> oh, God. That that's bo- it bothers me when I can't remember that. Yeah, but I, right. I remember when the fire happened. Thank God for Google, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So those are... 
Yeah, Charles Bar probably Charles probably Charles. my favorite breakfast place to go to. Okay, you got a you got a second favorite? Oh, second favorite. Um, is it Lindemar? Oh yeah, the Lindemar. Yeah, the Lindemar re- restaurant yeah, down yeah. there because uh-huh. the Lindemar restaurant is so so fantastic. You know, you go down the side street, you park. You know, defensively ready to get out <laughs> of that area if you're driving, and they've got just a good solid breakfast. I love their machaca. And you enjoy your, your wonderful breakfast, and you bring, you know, your, your little scuba stuff, and they've got that little mini cove out front, and you can go snorkeling out there. Not scuba. Uh, well, I guess you could. Yeah, your snorkel gear. Yeah, yeah you snorkeling, and, you know, you'll see, like, you know, eagle rays, and, uh, you know, it's just, it's just it's a great spot. Oh, That's it's one of my favorite places. Beautiful. It's well to take the family. Yeah, even if you don't want to get in the water, it's just, you know, the, the, the is. view is, yeah. is unbeatable. It's very, yeah. very pretty. I agree, I agree. Good for you. Um now you uh, live near, you live near the uh, cruise, ship cruise ship terminal. Yeah, what kind of places are out there? Oh, you got La Aurora. Yeah, you know Aurora. Uh, I know Aurora. It's like um, it's like Taco City, right? Yeah, Aurora is the neighborhood behind uh, Walmart, Sam's Club, Galleria's, mm-hmm. and it's our our uh, you know I guess the high rises, the original high rises of Puerto Vallarta. And you've got, yeah, fantastic tacos and tortas, which are the sandwiches. There's a wonderful hamburger place back there that's open in the evening. Uh, and then, yeah, El Machin. Have you heard of Machin? I've heard it. I've Ma- driven past good. it, but uh, Mexican food evidently, right? Yeah, so Machin, yeah. he specializes in, uh, was it uh, birria tacos? Uh-huh. A beer, delicious beef taco, and then also shrimp tacos. He's got a nice tangy, zangy uh, chipotle sauce nice. on top of that. Yeah. It's a great place for lunch. All right. Yeah, I've seen it. I've got to stop there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right. How about um, how about lunch? What kind of lunch places do you like? That would that would be it. You that would be right there. Yeah. Machine's good. What else is good for lunch? Back in uh, La Aurora, they have all those stands. I mean, do they have any kind of crazy specialty stands in there? They have, I mean, you got your regular taco, and then it's, it's increasing in size. It goes taco quesadilla, and then because even though I've been here nearly 17 years, I still can't roll my R's in arriero. Arriero? Arriero. Yes, yes, my, 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 my Mexican wife. I uh, love arrieros. Yeah, so oh, it's yeah. like the jumbo taco, which is kind of like the kitchen sink where they throw all the different meats in there. That's, that's a solid, you know, lunch, early dinner. Yeah. Option right there, and you can usually depend on a handmade corn tortilla with one of those audio. Oh yeah, uh, audio really ropes. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yes, cool. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, how about dinner places? Dinner? Yeah. Uh, for a nicer dinner, Barrio Bistro is a solid. You know, uh, I I try to avoid weekend dinners. Yeah. Because especially in high season or shoulder season, but yeah, Barrio Bistro during the week is fantastic. Uh, and then once up the, on the river now. They moved from the marina. Uh, Joel Ornelas oh, has. Oh, yeah. Um, Tintoke. Tintoke. Oh, Tintoke is your special place. That's your anniversary dinner, you know, your your special occasion, birthday. The food's phenomenal. What? Uh, you got a favorite dish there? Uh, he changes it. So, no. So, you can't. I can't. You can't. Yeah. yeah. What, the whatever is the special. Well, it's weird because it's the same with uh, Memo over at uh, Barrio Bistro, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I was going to ask you the same thing, yeah, but yeah. no, I knew. I know he changes his yeah, menu. Exactly. So, now they got two like that. Yeah. Well, I like about it, well, with Memo is like he always has a shrimp, a chicken, a fish, and a beef. But, you know, it changes. You yeah. Know, they, so, it, so, that's good. But with uh, with Hoel there at Tintoke, I mean, the, the guy is... The guy's good, yeah. and he brings in chefs. So uh, you know he has other chefs visit from around Mexico, and also some internationally. And so uh, we always love it when they have a special where somebody's in town, and we do the flight. You know, like the I don't know if it's ten, twelve dishes or whatever they are. They're small. It's gourmet. It's that little stuff. Uh huh. But oh my God, the food is so good. Uh, and uh, you know, I gotta get over there. I gotta yeah, get over there. Well, I, you know, I wanted to get over there when they were in the marina, and then I wouldn't. Surprise! They're in town, and it's kind of like okay, yeah, you know, they're here. <laughs> they came to you. Yeah, they they're came waiting to me. for you. <laughs> exactly. Come on, Barry. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, so though you got two date night places that you just told me yeah. about. You, what about you know just regular stuff? Oh man, you know, uh, the irony of being here, being married to a Mexican, and uh, 
Does she cook for you there? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, tacos, you know, yeah. especially you know some, some some good tacos, some good night tacos, tacos El Pastor. Right. You got a favorite uh, stand uh, around the corner from the Honda motorcycle place. Up from there's a uh, uh, what is the, what's the pizza place up the street here? They have a uh, Los Muertos. Los Muertos has has a pizza yeah, place over got there. there Francisco Villa. Back behind Versailles, yes, yeah, our Francisco Villa. Yeah. Up. Half a block on the left hand side, there's uh, Tacos uh, Sawayo. Those are really good. Tacos Sawayo. Okay. Yeah, you want to go after 8 30 because, you know, you go show up right when they open. The meat's not cooked all the way and it's a little burnt because <laughs> they're overheating it, you know. You wait until like, you know, 8 45, 9 o'clock when, you know, people start eating their tacos and, oh, great flavor. So, yeah. 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 What What is your favorite taco there? Uh, tacos Pastor. That's pretty Pastor. much all they got. Yeah. You can get the Volcan. And then another good taco place is behind in here in uh, ZR, in Zona Romantica, behind the church. They have the head tacos right there, mm-hmm. you know, which are fantastic. The yeah. sauces are really tasty. The carnaza, for people that don't want to do, you know, the eyeball or the tongue or anything like that, <laughs> get your carnaza, you know, like a, a neck meat taco. That's a pretty tasty one there. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, what's another place? Lunch dinner, you know, would be... Uh, is it, is it Mirio's? No, Lirio's. You know uh, where Lirio's uh, is? I've heard of it. Yeah, Lirio's. Yeah, yeah Lirio's. So from where uh, Hacienda Aleman was going up to Which is now ride, turning into a uh, condo. Which will now be, you know, what was formerly known as Hacienda, yeah, Hacienda <laughs> Aleman. Turn right there after that and up on the next left-hand corner is Lirio's. Oh, and, okay. And uh, seafood, very fresh, very simple. You know, presentation and flavor. So that that's a solid place as well. I got to get over there one of these I, yeah. days. I've really been meaning to get over there. Yeah, I mean, I, but I, I think in in Vallarta there is no bad food. There's a couple places where the food's kind of like eh, but uh, for the most part, you know, you can't go wrong wherever you go for food. For the most part, aren't we lucky? Aren't yes. we lucky? Yes, we are. We're very fortunate. What about a, a dessert? Where would you go for dessert? That's hard now. Um, it would have been, and still, to my knowledge, is open, but it's the Paris Cafe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah they're over I'd, near uh, Molino de Agua. Molino de Agua. Eric just passed away, was my understanding, mm. unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, Lupita, I believe is her name, the woman that, that run, ran it for him, runs it for him, is still there. Okay. And so they've, they've got, still got that. They're still doing yeah. it. Still yeah. Doing it. They've got so many good pastries. Um. If you had somebody come in to visit you from uh, from home or wherever, and mm-hmm. you didn't have time for them. You know, you had to go stand in line over at the uh, oh, yeah. over the DMV. Yeah, you know? um, in the sun for five hours. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you were going to meet them over at the cruise ship terminal, and you were going to drop them off somewhere in town that would represent Puerto Vallarta. Where would you Where would you take them? That's such a hard question because Puerto Vallarta is so varied. Um, I think, you know, uh, by the Buenaventura. <laughs> and right. then have, them, have them walk from the Buenaventura down towards, you know, the Malacan. I mean, it's what 45-minute hour walk, you know, if you're walking at a decent pace. But you see so much along the way. Cinco de Decembre, Centro, Zona Romantica. That's pretty quintessential. Yeah, so just know, drop to. them over at the Buena Ventura and say, walk south. Yeah, exactly. You know, just stay on this street and walk south. Yeah. yeah, and get off a little bit. Go up a block or two because, you know, you've got so many great art galleries up up behind Centro. Yeah, and Cinco's beautiful, changing beautiful, a lot. Tur- beautiful murals and all beautiful kinds of Beautiful murals, exactly, on Morello yeah. Street. Yeah, there's just there's so much to see. You know, you can't. Can't put your finger on it. You no, know? but that's uh, that's a great idea. I mean, you know, that they they see a lot. They're going to see the church. They're going to see all kinds mm-hmm. of stuff on the way down. So. Yeah, they'll see it all. Yeah. Um, how about if you were going to take a day off and come back, mm-hmm. just one, you know, just a day trip? Mm-hmm. Where would you do? Where would you go? Uh, this time of year, especially San Sebastian's, probably my our favorite place yeah. to go to. San Sebastian's, uh, an old silver mining town from the 1600s, I think. And it's, uh, I want to say it's 1,500, 2,000 feet elevation, an hour and a half from PV. But ironically enough, it's only like 30 miles as the crow flies. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so that has just, uh, it's such a, a beautiful place and the weather's, you know, nice and cool. 
the lack of humidity or less humidity up there. That's, yeah. that's a nice overnight day trip place to go for me. Okay. And yeah. when you stay there, do you have a favorite place you stay? Uh, there's Now there's a, a great variety of, you know, Airbnbs and private residences and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, traditionally, there would always be Hotel uh, El Puente there on the back side of town, yeah. on the back bridge over there, you know. I don't know, 10, 15 bucks, you know, per person. And you can bring your dog and, you know, it's a beautiful courtyard and little restaurants around the corner and stuff like that. But hey. it's nice. You have very simple to very high end there now. Nice. San, right. San Sebastian. Well, one of these days. I, it's just I have so f- little time. Yeah. I'd like hey, to be able I, to spend the night there, you know? You know, I've, I've, got, so I've got a borrow car program now, so you can do it with my borrow cars. Dude, I, well, why didn't you tell me about that? You want to say that? You want to talk about that right now? Yeah, yeah I just, uh, I, I come across a lot of cars, and I uh, always encourage my clients or my followers, you know, if they have a car they're looking to sell, Go ahead, and uh, I asked them to send me the paperwork in advance to verify, yeah. you know, to see if there's any issues that's nice and clean. And I say, go ahead and make a Facebook Marketplace fo- post and send it to me, and I'll share it on my page because I want you to sell your car. It's going to benefit some of my clients that follow follows me. But yeah. I occasionally come across a car, I'm like, oh, I like this one. Uh-huh. And so, uh, you know, I, I loan them out, you know, for a reasonable amount to, you know, trusted clients and people that are are looking for, you know, just get around town. That way I have it for myself one day if I need it or when needed. That's totally cool. Yeah. All right, all right. Keep that in mind, guys. <laughs> you have to know how to drive and don't drink. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, if you had a three-day kind of a trip, or it could be even longer if you want. Yeah. Uh, where would you go? Uh, Guadalajara is a nice, a nice place to visit. You know, there's a lot of things going on there. Guadalajara is interesting. It reminds me of like of a, of a, a Los Angeles you know, so it's kind of got that vibe to a certain extent. It's got some cool older areas and a lot of new energy and a lot of glam and stuff like that. You're looking at a five to seven hour drive mm-hmm. up or only 45 minute flight. But driving, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot to see. One of my favorite trips probably comes close to five to seven days and it'd be uh, leave PV, end up in Guadalajara for the night. You know, go ahead, check out Guadalajara. And then go to Angangueo, Michoacan, where they have the monarch butterflies uh, by Rosario. Uh, and you get there typically in the afternoon, evening, uh, spend the night, and then go out in the morning and go see the butterflies. The monarch butterflies is amazing. That's uh, December through March, probably January, February. Uh, March is the best time. And it's incredible. It's this pine forest, uh, high elevation, and it looks like the trees are painted with the monarch butterflies. It's it's surreal. Uh, it's it's yeah. It's pretty pretty psychedelic, <laughs> man. And then around don't take those mushrooms before you yeah, go. Yeah, or do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe so, right? Or but uh, or not necessary, <laughs> but yeah. And around nine nine thirty ten o'clock, you know, the, the it gets starts heating up, and the dew burns off their little you know wings, and they start moving about, and the sound, and then pretty soon by you know like eleven, twelve o'clock, you're surrounded by thousands hundreds of thousands of butterflies it's one of the most amazing experiences i've done it four or five times yeah you must like it yeah <laughs> yeah i do and then and then cool from there you know you can actually shoot out from there you know uh, midday uh and be in mexico city by the afternoon early evening and oh, is that close huh it's that close and oh. so really cool you blast by uh via the bravo and then boom you're in mexico city and spend you know Two, three days in Mexico City, uh, at least, you know, and then head back. And the way back, you can loop up and go to uh, Guanajuato, you know, uh, Savaya, or cut down back into Michoacan on the toll road back to Guadalajara and go to Morelia, which is actually a pretty cool place as well. I've heard lovely things about Morelia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barbara, Barbara from Santa Barbara, yeah. actually. She's yeah, doing that for the I summers now. So. We've had Barbara from Santa Barbara on the Barbara show. Barbara from Santa Barbara, yeah. yeah. We have, we have. So. Oh, well, uh, okay, that's very cool. Um, and then... In Mexico City, you got, mm-hmm. do you have any any favorite places to stay? Any favorite places to to eat? Uh, there's just too there, many. You know, no, Barry, there's you just kidding too me? many. Yeah, there, <laughs> there's you know. I got uh, from Joel from Barrio uh, from Parmi from uh, Tintoke gave me a recommendation to a place, and I went uh, to that restaurant. It was amazing, but it just depends. Uh, you can stay in Centro, which is you know a touch. 
you know, I won't say dirty, but, you know, live. Or uh-huh. you can go, you know, a little higher and then go to Polanco or in between, you know, and Reforma and stuff like that. But just pick a place where you can kind of walk around. I mean, I, I've taken the subway in Mexico City and it's five pesos and, you know, haven't been kidnapped or, uh, you know, <laughs> robbed yet. Yeah, but isn't it kind of weird how they... Uh you know, separate the men from the women in, in the uh, afternoons. Uh, Some of them, during, during you the know, rush hour. It, it, it's, you know, it's, it's, yeah, you want to try to avoid the rush hour yeah. when, when possible. But I've been in there and you're packed in like a sardine. Yeah. Everybody's got their backpack on the, on the, on the front of them, you know, uh, but yes. they're also nice because somebody would say, hey, your backpack's open. Close that pocket right there. So there's this, you know, there's friendliness or friendliness. care to it, you know, and, you know, taking, taking, you know, taking the, uh, with my, my carry on suitcase and, gone back to the airport on that because honestly the subway is faster than sometimes the ubers and the oh, uh, yeah. taxis when the traffic's in rush hour traffic absolutely so but yeah so much to see that's a whole nother podcast yeah right <laughs> Mexico City. <laughs> um if you had a unlimited budget price no object what would you do on this bay you know the great thing about pv nothing's terribly expensive in the big scheme of things compared to, you know, the States or Canada. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, the Marietas, you know, to go out with the Marietas. That's a fun spot with a little hidden beach there. Hidden beach, yeah. There's just, there's a lot. Yeah, I there's mean, a lot. Yeah, and then there's a lot of times you don't, you don't even have to spend any money just, you know, driving around. Some of the waterfall hikes, you know, you can go from, what is it, to hike to Las Animas, you know, catch a, catch a boat back, get Lapa. Yeah, no. That's the beauty of PV. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, that is. Um, if you had a word of advice for a first-time traveler coming here, what would that be? Relax. You know, everybody's terrified about the water and the exchange rate and the airport. And, you know, what I love about Puerto Vallarta and the people here is the energy is so good. They, they keep an eye out on you. You know, I mean, look, you get to the airport, you know, all the timeshare promoters are saying, hey, let me give you a free free taxi ride home, and <laughs> I'll pay for your, your trip to Vart Adventures Mahawitas, you know. But, no, I mean, I've had a car break down in the middle of, middle of nowhere out by, you know, Punta Mita, and people stop and, you know, give you a ride to mechanic. Mechanic drives you back, fixes the car. It's just you can go anywhere and do anything and, you know, use common sense. Don't, don't be, uh, well, you know. Don't be a dick. Yeah, that's actually a great piece of advice. <laughs> you know, don't bring your prejudices and stresses from back home and just, you know, open up and enjoy the energy that's here because it's unlike anywhere else in Mexico I've been as well. Yeah. That's what that's what keeps me here. Uh, me too. Yeah. How about uh, words of warning? In terms of, I mean, car stuff, you Anything, know, you know. Uh, People driving down. So one thing would be, you know, people say, I'm going to drive down. I'm going to drive down, bring my car from the States or Canada. I tell them, uh, once you cross the border, along the border region, basically, you know, from, let's say, the border to Monterey or all the way down to uh, Mazatlan, uh, you know, only drive from seven, between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., you know. Uh, that's when you got, you know, the, the the good cops going along for the most part and everything's, mm-hmm. you know, a bit more malware. Mm-hmm. Uh, stick to the toll roads uh, whenever possible. And, uh, yeah, you know, but I, people say, can I bring my Beamer down? Can I bring my Mercedes? You know, whatever. Yeah, bring it down. Nobody's, nobody's going to bother you. And you get pulled over, then you just smile and ask for the ticket. You know, if it's a federal ticket, you can pay at the local federal uh, Gordon National Office here, you know. So it's you just relax. relax, relax, chill, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you end up? Did you end up buying a place? Do you rent? What do you do? Uh, we're still renting yeah. where we live. You know, in the neighborhood. I, I just kept on missing. Like, oh, why? Why would I? Why would I buy when the rent's so cheap? And then the rent went up. It's like, hmm, well. <laughs> Kind of still the same position, you know. Why would I buy a servants? Because well, not cheap, is, but, but you know, comparatively speaking, reasonable. So, right? yeah. yeah, I do have a, I do have a small building downtown in Fifth uh, of December. 
uh, for us one day. It's, you know, in the process, slowly, eventually be expanded. But right now we, we do Airbnb and, you know, the direct rentals out of that studio in a one bedroom. Okay. All right. That, yeah. I'll, I'll put a link to that in the show yeah, notes, yeah, you know, yeah. if you want to, you know, yeah, have see a what the, the beach, great spot. Yeah. Great spot. Location, right. Location, in location. Cinco de Diciembre. Yeah. Right there next to, you know, just walk right down to Barracuda and you're all set. Literally. Yes. Right. Yeah. Two blocks. Boom. See, I nailed it. There we go. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Well, let's get back to patch plays. Uh-huh. Uh, patch plates. Mm-hmm. How do we, uh, how do we contact you? Um, where do we find you? It's a pain, I know, for some of you, but Facebook is preferable. Uh, www.fb.me slash Pat's Plates PV. So they can message me directly. But facebook.com slash Pat's Plates PV is the way to get a hold of us. Okay. Uh, we're also by email, uh, Pat's Plates PV at gmail.com and Pat at Pat's Plates PV.com. Okay. It's a way to reach us there. Very good. We'll have all those in the show notes. You, yeah. you can find that, of course, at www.portovaratotravelshow.com. I'll have a picture of Pat's smiling face. And I will also uh, have links to places that Pat talked about in the show notes. So look for it there. Um, is there anything I forgot? Is there something that we didn't cover that... Oh, I'll remember you two too. in the morning. You, you know, will. Come to me, right? <laughs> All right. Well, send me an email. I'll add it in, okay? <laughs> uh, Pat, I, I want to thank you so much for mm-hmm. taking time out of your really busy day. You are a busy man. Yeah, and, you. Uh, you know, taking the time to help educate my listeners about the complications and um, maybe even difficulties, of course, of, uh, of doing the, the Mexican driver's license. And then, of course, registration and plates and stuff like that. And I, I truly appreciate that. Well, thank you. And we appreciate what you're doing as well. All right. Thank you so much, Pat. That's all great information. Right? Whether you plan to own a vehicle or not in Mexico, all great stuff. And I like how Pat is going to give you the tools to do it yourself if you have the time and the wherewithal see it all through. Uh, the lines are long. They would chase me away for sure. I have pictures of some of those long lines in the show notes, as well as special links to things that Pat and I talked about. So look for those, of course, over at www.puertovallartatravelshow.com. I even have a link to his little Airbnb. Okay, well, that should do it for today. Next week, stay tuned for more on-the-ground reports from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, with travel tips, great restaurant excursion ideas, and more. But until then, remember that this is an interactive show where I depend on your questions and your suggestions about all things Puerto Vallarta. If you think of something that I should be talking about, well, please reach out to me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending off your message. And remember, if you're considering booking any type of tour while you're in Puerto Vallarta, you must go to vallartainfo.com. That's JR's website. Reserve your tour through him, right from his website. Remember, this is a value-for-value value proposition. His experience and on-the-ground knowledge of everything Puerto Vallarta, in exchange for your making a purchase of a tour that you would do anyway, you're just doing it through him as a way of saying thank you. Thanks, JR, for being our guide. It costs no more than if you were going to use someone else, so do it, really. And when you do take one of those tours, email me about your experiences. Maybe you can come on board and share with others what you liked or didn't like about the tour. Again, contact me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending off a message. And don't forget his maps, his DIY tours, his revitalized happy hour board, and more. I have links to all of those in the show notes. And once again, if you like this podcast, please take the time and subscribe and follow and share with a friend or lover of Puerto Vallarta. Maybe even give me a good review wherever you happen to be listening. That way we can get the word out to more and more people about the magic of this place, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Remember, I made it easy for you to do just that with each episode I create. But if you haven't been to my website, you really need to have a look there. I have links to the places that we talk about, interesting pictures and more, all right there in the blog posts and in the show notes for each episode of the show. So check them out for sure if you haven't already. All right? <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you, Maddie James and uh, Jesse from Perpetual Pancake Panini's Pizza Eat Mas and Check out their new Italian pasta special. 
stop in, pick up a sandwich or a pizza for your ride down to Maito or down to Tema Mixley. I have all their information in the show notes. And thank you to Patrick Pickett from Patch Plates, Expat Help for Vehicle Registration and Driver's Licenses in Puerto Vallarta and along the bay in Nuevo Nayarit as well. Uh, you can find all this information in the show notes, of course. You'll find it at www.portofartatravelshow.com. And hey, thanks to all of you for listening all the way through this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. This is Barry Kessler, signing off with a wish for you all to slow down, be calm, and live Vallarta lifestyle. Nos vemos, amigos. Samba de Puerto Vallarta